just a few moments. So I hope you listened to that melody. It's new, but it's good. So we're going to start with a time of centering and silent prayer. Centering means to bring yourself to the place where you are aware of yourself. You are aware of your thoughts. You are aware of your body, in this case, as you're sitting down. You are aware that you are living and breathing and have brought yourself into the presence of God. So let us just take a few moments and enjoy that center. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn this evening is to the familiar tune of Come and Find the Quiet Center. But the words are, Wash, O God, our sons and daughters. We will sing verse 1 and 3. Would you stand to sing? Thank you. 
us pray. Come to us and among us, loving and merciful God. Enter our hearts and abide with us in salvation, love, and grace. Create in us a time and place for our souls to abide in the depth of your love. Transform us through this experience of worship, empowering us to serve. We want to follow Jesus and serve our families, friends, and neighbors the way he served us. Help us to be faithful as you are faithful. Help us to follow your ways of love and compassion, looking to the needs of others. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is in the Faith We Sing, number 2243, We All Are One in Mission. Said, This is my body, 
that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us prepare ourselves to come to the table, at the table of grace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. 
yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 18. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture, the one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. The word of God for the people of God. How do we come to the table? Do we come with clean feet? Jesus said, serve one another. We get it, but feet? For one thing, cleaning feet requires us to get on our knees. Getting on our knees humbles us in front of another. Feet are nasty and forgotten. How about hands? How about eyes and ears and mouth and nose? Right? No, the message tonight is feet. Jesus' example of the foot washing wasn't meant to be all nice and symbolic, the disciples had dirty feet. None of them picked up on the fact that there was no servant there to, to do the washing. Jesus seized the opportunity to deliver a lesson through his act of service. He could clean their feet because he loved them. It was shocking, unheard of, controversial, a master Serving their students? Absurd. Jesus washed the dirty, smelly, abused, battered, and worn feet of the disciples. Sandals open to the dirt of the ground, not shoes and socks. Take a hike in the summer in your sandals or your flip-flops, and then take a good look at your feet. I bet you can hear your mother's voice saying, don't you dare crawl into bed with those dirty feet. 
For Jesus, however, it wasn't about having clean feet for bedtime. It was about how they would come to the table with him. It was to abide with him. It was to learn from him. And we should too. If nothing else, this act of Jesus points us to consider how we come to the table of grace and our willingness to be open to receive from him, even if it is a lesson. Do we come with open hearts, willing to listen and learn? Do we come prepared to fully surrender? Can we humble ourselves and realize that we come in our brokenness and are in need of washing and being made clean? Jesus calls us to be fully committed, willing to serve each other the way Jesus served us. If we are willing to clean feet, as an act of love, it reveals that we are willing to love the worst and accept the worst in each other. They'll know we are Christians by our love. We love that song, don't we? And we like to sing it, but we like to think we can live it. But can we live it if it means washing feet? Can we be the one in the spirit of Christ to kneel before another and wash feet. As was the custom, a servant was the one to wash feet. If the disciples felt that the job was beneath them, imagine how they felt having Jesus do it. It wasn't the job of a master or a teacher. So as he reaches for the bowl and the towel, they experience a role reversal that makes them extremely uncomfortable. Jesus served them anyway, even in their discomfort. No wonder Peter balked about it. Not me, Lord. You won't wash my feet. Oh, but he did. There's a fine line between being too independent and not dependent enough. We want to be confident in our love, but not be burdened by it. We want to know we are loved, but not be smothered in it. We want, we want, well, to be honest, it's not about what we want. It's about the other of us. It's about serving our neighbor in love. We almost wish that this faith thing, this love thing would be easier. But no, Jesus had to go the extra mile and call us to serve and to love the whole world, calling everyone our neighbors, and that includes all of those with dirty feet. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Loving one another is not just a good idea. It's not just a, a clue to better living. It's not a suggestion for a healthy and happy lifestyle. Jesus made a commandment, love one another. And he did so as he served. The sign that we belong, that we are part of the fellowship, part of the family, is not by how well we know scripture, not by the good works or acts of charity that we perform, not by the hours of time that we spend in the pew that accumulate throughout our lives. All of that is good, but it's not the sign that we belong to Christ. It's the love in and through all things that will make others know we belong to Christ. It is the love that we are to live in holy living through our spiritual disciplines that we practice, and the purpose of practicing them is to learn of love, to learn the depth of love that takes a lifetime to learn. And so we practice we practice love to understand. 
how to love like Jesus. Jesus said, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It is what defines a Christian. It is what shows the world the face of Christ. Love is our response to Jesus' love when he served us. Serving is how love is seen and experienced by another person, by one another, as in love one another. How do we show our love for one another? Well, that's the question. We gather tonight to remember Jesus, what he taught us, what he did for us by washing feet and instituting the table of grace. We can't help but hear in his words the message that he spoke to the disciples. <clears throat> we can't help but hear the commandment to love and see the sign that we are to love each other. When we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, when we kneel or stand to receive the cup and the bread, we hear the words echoing in our hearts, love one another as I have loved you. And we come confessing that it's harder than it should be, and it's harder than we want it to be. We want the benefits of living in Christian community. We want to have the privilege of being assured that the community is one where love is found and practiced. Again, there are those words. We want. Think about your life. Who makes a difference for the sake of love in your life? Who is God using to teach you how to be the person who loves another? Not for self, but for someone else. For some, love will be the words that you say. For others, it will be the deeds that you do or the gifts that you give. And for still others, it's the presence and attention that you bestow upon them. Love is as simple as a smile and as complicated as the compassion that calls us to remain bedside at the time of death. The blessing is that here in this place, this place where we gather around the table of grace is where we put away our squabbling and practice love in an atmosphere of forgiveness and grace. We love as Jesus loved. We gather to say thank you to the one who has called us together to be in community, to bestow love in us and through us to make sure that we know that the image of God in me connects to the image of God in you, and that happens when we share love. It's not an easy task, to be sure, but we do not do it under our own power, but through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Loving takes time. It takes sacrifice. It takes effort. Sacrificial loving means accepting the other for who they are. Maybe it's with dirty feet. Maybe it's with a dirty mouth of hurtful words. Or maybe dirty hands of violent behavior. Maybe it's the dirt of apathy or complacency. We all have sin that needs to be cleaned and removed. When we look back and consider what Jesus actually said, it was not love the best you can, or love when it's easy or convenient. He said, love as I have loved you. He said, abide in my love. We learn of God's love by abiding in God's love. That's the sign. That's the goal. That's how the world will know we belong to Jesus. They will see him in our love. The symbolism of the foot washing is lost on us if Jesus' example with his disciples is not a message that transforms us into serving one another. Our Christian acts of kindness in helping and serving are to meet the needs of the others as we share love. The disciples needed clean feet to come to the table. 
We are not to judge one another by some needs or decide what we think they need when we are called to serve in love. It may not be to wash feet, but it just might be. You never know. As long as it's all done in the name of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we come tonight to thank you and praise you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the table where we are welcome to come. We thank and praise you that we can come just as we are, knowing that you will receive us, love us, and forgive us. We want the world to see you in us. We want the world to see that we belong to you by the way that we live. We desire to live for Jesus. It may be difficult, Lord, but you call us to serve. So send to us your Holy Spirit to teach us how to serve one another. To have eyes open and ears listening for the needs of others. And to humble ourselves in service the same way that Jesus humbled himself and served the disciples. In your blessed name, sweet Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Yezu Yezu, verse 1 and 4. Let us stand to sing.